Hi, recently I've started experimenting uh, with various kinds of regulators and uh, current uh, load uh, control circuits. Uh, this is a good example. This is a PMLK kit. This is a buck converter kit uh, for experimentation. I've also been started working with battery chargers and this is the BQ25703. Uh, I'm also experimenting with these batteries. These are uh, 18650 cells and these cheap uh, charging uh, modules that are available on eBay now one of the problems that I've been facing is in order to characterize these boards I need uh, because the the current uh, being drawn by these batteries varies so uh, I need a method by which I can have a constant current being drawn from the uh, circuit so that I can uh, evaluate the module the simple method of doing this is using these so these are 10 watt or 5 watt resistors uh, that are of very small value and I can connect them chain them up and uh, you know configure them to draw a particular current but the problem with this is that varying them involves getting a lot of values and then toggling them and moving them around and so on and so forth so I need a simpler better way to have a load that can draw up uh, current uh, the uh, specific amount of current that I need now typical DC loads are available online and uh, they are they have two problems with them the first they're very expensive I really can't afford one of them the second is that they're really big and bulky so putting one uh, you know the mobility factor just kicks out so a simple method of doing uh, a constant current load is something that was shared initially by Dave Jones of the EEB blog and I've uh, made up a, a little circuit on my own so this is the simple circuit uh, a simple DIY constant current load that I have assembled and uh, that's what I'm going to talk about in this video so let's get started now making one of these uh, circuits is not that trivial there's a lot of information already online and uh, like I said I'm replicating design so, uh, specified by D Dave Jones of the EEB blog the idea was to have something that is very low cost and uh, uh, using parts that I already have in the lab so what I did was I drew up this little circuit so I want, uh, let's, let me just go through uh, the circuit how it works I have a uh, buffer op amp here which connects to a multi-turn pot now I'm using a multi-turn preset uh, because I don't really have those multi-turn uh, expensive pots. Those small presets, small variable resistors uh, are easier to find and, yes, and are more cost effective. I'm using the LM358 which is a dual op amp. Uh, it's not a rail to rail op amp but it's really really cheap. It won't go down below 1 millivolt to 2 millivolt but it can go up to it can use a power supply up to 36 volts so for powering this thing up I'm using a 9 volt battery uh, then I have a uh, uh, it connected to a second stage uh, wherein I'm using an IRFZ and 44N um, Dave recommends using a logic level MOSFET like an MTP3055 and uh, probably that's a good idea but in my case, I had this lying around and I'm going to use VCC at uh, 9 volts or 12 volts. Uh, I'm going to chain up uh, batteries and make a battery pack out of them. So more or less, it's going to work for me. I, I'm not going to be supplying only 5 volts here. So because this last stage is going to be working as a comparator, so it's going to go all the way high up. You can use a dedicated comparator instead of this. Uh, and that's really recommended if you don't want your... Uh, you know if, you, if you're not sure if this thing is gonna be falling soon and we're gonna do a bit of analysis in another video but I've got the MOSFET here and I've got an R a sense resistor here so uh, I've got uh, in my uh, little layout coming back here there we go so I've got uh, 10 ohm resistors 10 of them chained these are 1% resistors so uh, again I have something I bought in bulk about 35 Indian rupees that's half a dollar for about 250 350 500 quantity I don't remember but they were really really cheap when I bought them uh, like, like a decade ago uh, these are 1% resistors 10 ohms connected in parallel so they give me a 1 ohm resistance and this is my sense resistance so I've got it feeding to the uh, negative uh, the inverting input of the op amp so if if I get a voltage of say uh, 500 milliamps set fi uh, here then what it will try to do is the op amp will try to using its op amp action it's going to do its thing and it's going to try that so that it gets 500 milliamps here so if 500 milliamps here 
uh, sorry, 500 millivolts here means at a one ohm resistance V is equal to IR, I should get about bingo 500 mil, uh, milliamps uh, so uh, I'm going to be driving this little MOSFET of course this is going to be dissipating a lot of heat so I'm going to need a heat sink here as well uh, just to uh, before I actually make up I'm not going to make a PCB because this is going to be done in uh, true DIY style so everyone can do a follow at home so I've got the LM358 uh, laid out like this I've got one of these resistors connecting from under you know I've just laid it out on a piece of paper and then uh, this is the final result here you can see I have the multi-turn pot, the 10K uh, resistors, so R1, R2, uh, let's put R1 is equal to R2 is equal to 10K, all right. And uh, then I've got these 1% uh, uh, 10 ohm resistances doing 1 ohms. Uh, in addition to that, I've got a small little heatsink here. So we're going to take a look at the heatsink calculations next. But in order for me to check uh, what uh, current is being set, I've taken a line from here so what I've done is I've taken this as a point and extracted it and I have a small connector so instead of buying another multimeter or something like that what I've done is I've created this uh, four pin connector and I've attached these banana plugs to it so my intention is to create uh, this load connected via this pin here of course one of these uh, uh, foot sense has uh, disappeared for some reason and connecting this here and voila I don't need an external multimeter I just send, set it to millivolts and it should give me the milliamp reading that I have actually set using the preset uh, so simple as that is uh, let's take a look at uh, how much power this thing is supposed to dissipate all right, a quick set of calculations. Uh, what I've got is I have the IFRs, IRFZ44N. It can operate up to 175 degrees and at 50 watts of uh, you know power. So uh, technically, the uh, if I get a heat sink, it sh will have the drop multiplied by I. That's the V into I power dissipation equation. Uh, I've done a few basic calculations. If I want to draw, say, half an amp at 12 volts, that means the drop across my sense resistor is going to be the current because this there's it's a 1 ohm resistance. So uh, V into I, uh, sorry, I into R. So resistance 1 multiplied by 0.55, and then I get a drop of 12 minus this, 11.5. Uh, that's 5.75 watts. If I bump up uh, the current draw to about 1 amps, at 12 volts it comes out to 11 watts and uh, about 1 amps lowering the voltage down to 5 volts it comes to 4 watts uh, 1 amp drawn at 3.3 volts so it, this thing is capable of doing 3.3 volts 1.5 amps I can test this at uh, 1 um, amp 3.3 and it'll only dissipate 2.5 watts Huh. And doing half an amp at 3.3, it would be 1.45 uh, watts. So really, this uh, tiny little load is going to solve a lot of my problems. So let's take a look at the working of it. Let's do a small demonstration of the project in action. All right, it's time to test uh, our little DIY current load. This is the module is being powered by a 9 volt uh, battery. Uh, there's the op-amp MOSFET with the small heat sink. I've set the 10 mAh power supply to 12 volts, limiting at a half an amp. Uh, this is the uh, cheapo multimeter that is connected to the uh, set pin of the uh, you know the op amp that sets the current limit and uh, I've connected a fluke just in series just to verify whether uh, I'm getting the correct uh, readings or not so switching it on uh, so this is going to be measuring the uh, DC current hold on a second yeah DC current so uh, going up it should pop up there we go so I'm gonna set it about a hundred milliamps hold on it's a multi-turn preset that I've got there, so it should be easy to. It's well, it's not that easy though. Okay. Uh, tap 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 tap. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, all right. 
so I've said it, uh, it says 102 here and a 101.8 there. The um, set voltage on the op amps uh, input on the uh, first, uh, second stage is this is actually setting the current that is going to be uh, drawn by the load. All right, now I've got uh, the temperature probe out. I've I've, I'm going to probe the uh, heat sink over here, of course. Uh, there's a lot of places I can connect this. There we go. So it's going to give me the temperature. You can see it's going up. It's only drawing about 100 milliamps, and the temperature is now at 37 and rising. Let's take this, kick this up a notch, and uh, let's see what happens. Hold on. So I'm going to be doing... <sighs> 200 300 400 there we go so now at i'm setting it at 524 you can see the current limit on this thing kicking in uh i'm gonna have to set it down a bit i'm gonna set it at exactly 500 and there we go oops 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 so connect it anywhere on the uh you can see uh, the temperature is rising, but uh, the MOSFET is able to handle up to 175 degrees, so uh, it's nowhere near that, not even 75 degrees. Uh, so, But it will get hot if I set the current limit higher, so it's drawing a good amount of current, but uh, I'm, I, it's safe to say it can be used for most of uh, the experimentation that you want to do. Of course, uh, there's going to be, you know, um, uh, if you want it to perform better uh, under higher current situations, you can attach a bigger heat sink to this thing. And uh, in my case, uh, I just want to draw somewhere around half an amp and test it about 3.2 3 uh, degrees, 3.3 uh, 3 volts or 2.7 volts or something like that because I want to be testing um, uh, different voltage regulators. So I don't really want it to draw too much of current. And the best part of this thing is it's portable and disposable. So uh, that's the DIY constant current load for you. And one last thing to consider uh, when you're making one of these circuits is uh, that taking a look at the MOSFET, uh, the VGS for the for the IRFZ44N, the VGS on should be somewhere around 10 volts. Now I'm already using a power supply that is uh, 9 volts and there's going to be, uh, it, it's not a real to real op amp, so the op amp really won't go to 9 volts. In addition to that, when the current through this uh, uh, line actually st starts to increase, if I have a 1 ohm resistance here, and I have one amp flowing through it. I'm expecting a one volt drop. So one volt at the uh, source pin and nine volts max at the gate pin. And that gives me an eight volt drop. So that's going to cause problems and it's going to cause issues with switching on the um, uh, MOSFET completely. So there's going to be a bit of an issue. And that's one of the reasons why uh, I was not able to get at one amps. Uh, you know, the reading on the multimeter was not the same. The set current on this thing was not the same as the set current uh, actually being drawn so that's uh, one of the things that you need to take care of even with the MTP uh, 3055 I would recommend using something like a 12 volt so I'm gonna be upgrading this little module uh, instead of using one 9 volt battery pack I'm gonna maybe use two one, two of those battery packs and then that in that condition it should work so this is the project as it finally is um, I've got everything hand soldered and uh, I've used hot glue to actually cut and uh, stick four pieces of uh, erasers that you get, you know, pencil erasers cut up into four pieces into foot stands all in DIY fashion and there we go. I'm going to do a PCB design of this some in some other lifetime, but for now uh, the DIY current load works for me. Uh, if you like this video, give, give it a like and thumbs up. Thanks for watching.